I am making this video. If you are a man and you are interested in having a loving, fulfilling relationship with an attractive woman, if you are content being single and being alone, fine, that's okay. But this is not the video for you, okay? This video is for the man that actually wants a feminine, gorgeous woman in his life. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the classroom. Today, I'm gonna to be explaining why the majority of young men are single. And this actually is the same reason that the majority of young women are single too. Because at the end of the day, if everybody had an option that they were satisfied with, then they would not in fact be single, okay? This doesn't mean you have to get married. This means that you would have a girlfriend or a partner, somebody that you would spend time with and have sex with, which at the end of the day is what we all want as humans. I know online people tend to pretend they'd rather be independent, like, oh, I don't need no man. I don't need anybody. Modern women are the worst. I'm happy as I am, you know? But that's a lie, bro. You've been programmed to enjoy spending time with other people. Ever since you were a child, you have spent time with other people. The only things that matter at the end of the day are family and whoever we spend the most time with. So that could be close friends or a girl that you really love. Or if you're a woman, a guy you really love. Today we're gonna talk about mostly men's dating issue. We're gonna talk about women a little bit, but I saw a study recently, broke my heart, boys. Okay, this was pretty fucked. 65% of young men are single. And it's terrifying. And there's a couple reasons why this is important too. You might not realize it, but the fact that you're even here right now as a human being is because society invested in you. I'll say that again, society has invested in you. Your parents have invested in you, hospitals and healthcare has invested in you. It might not feel like it because we all tend to feel like the government is pretty corrupt, but the government has invested in you too. All of the social services, school services, even just paving the roads in the winter time, filling potholes with concrete, the entire city and neighborhood that you live in, all of that has been put together because of you. We want you, and I'm saying this like I'm speaking to you, but I'm speaking to myself too. As young men, we are the ones that are gonna change the world. We're the ones that are gonna go to work, we're gonna make a difference in society, and I already know you guys are typing up comments like, well, that's not true. Well, look, I'm proven to have made a difference already. I've helped thousands of young men, I've helped thousands of men and women around the world, not just with my YouTube videos, but the various jobs I've had. I'm not just some trust fund kid, guys. I worked in construction, my family's middle class at best, and I was able to start some successful businesses. I've helped a bunch of people, okay? So I've proven myself, all right? And I say this not to brag, but I say this because you might be thinking, oh, I'm not gonna make a difference. And that's the kind of mindset that keeps you on the YouTube comment section, all right? I don't want you on the YouTube comment section. I want you out in the real world thriving, okay? So as much as you feel like society doesn't care about you, they do, okay? And the reason I'm saying this specifically is because the majority of young men are not treated well by society, okay? Life is hard if you're a young man. You have to prove yourself before you get anything from anyone. We are constantly being shat on, okay? We are constantly being criticized. Anything we do is toxic masculinity. And here's the most important part. Here's the critical part. Men have been suffering for hundreds of thousands of years, okay? We've had to go to war. We've been more likely to get injured or risk our lives getting food, hunting a mammoth. Bro, can you imagine trying to kill a fucking mammoth, dude? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me, dude? 10 dudes naked with fucking, you know, squirrel fur covering your balls, throwing a spear at a mammoth just to get some pussy. Crazy shit, bro, crazy. Anyways, though, like this is normal, though. We know about this. But here's the difference. Up until the last 30 years, all these guys suffering in a fucking coal mine, killing mammoths, working jobs they don't give a fuck about, they could still go home to a beautiful woman and family. At the end of the day, you could still meet a girl, make her your girlfriend, make her your wife, have kids. And that was just the little fucking ray of sunshine, okay? I saw this video on TikTok the other day. I don't go on TikTok. Somebody sent it to me. Nice try. Um, 
it was this guy and he was like in his car, he was covered in dirt. He's like a construction worker and he's like, you know, like I hate my job, but fucking, you know why I do it? Because every day I get to come home and see my daughter. <laughs> and then like he turns the phone and it's like him coming in the driveway and his daughter's like, yeah, daddy. Ah. And I was just like, fuck, dude, I feel that, you know, like I don't have kids, but someday, hopefully you want kids too. I would love to have a daughter. I'd love to have a son. In fact, I'm gonna have to make another video on this. I want 15, okay? But anyways, I'm on a big fucking tangent here, but you know, the first thing to explain to you is that yeah, it's possible to get girls and yeah, it's fucking hard. Society is set up so that, you know, it constantly goes through these cycles. And right now we're in the fucking hard time cycle, okay? So because men no longer have that same ease of accessibility to women, men aren't incentivized to do anything. What's the point of chasing puss if you can just jerk off and play video games, right? What's the point of pursuing women when a lot of them are standing you up on dates, when you go online and you see these viral clips of girls saying, oh, man needs to make $500,000 a year, all these like videos of these girls dancing and shit to advertise their OnlyFans, and then guys are just paying for that. Like, it makes total sense why, you know, young men are single across the board, all right? So I'm going to give you guys the actual solution to this problem. I'm going to teach you how to approach and meet girls in real life. And I'm also going to explain a couple different things that you're probably not thinking about that are actually keeping you single. And it's not just about the woman, guys. It's about everything that comes with it. It's the confidence. It's the ability to meet more people because now you can do stuff with other couples. This is a sad statistic. I can't remember it off the top of my head. But after the age of 25, something like 45 to 50 percent of people, they'll only hang out with you if you have a partner. OK, girls with boyfriends hang out with girls with other boyfriends. Boy, boys with girls hang out with other boys that have girlfriends, right? So if you're the odd man out, you're going to be the third wheel, the fifth wheel, the seventh wheel. So you're not going to get that same social inclusion, okay? And at the end of the day, you might not feel like you want women now. You might not feel like you want a relationship now, but this is a vital skill. So you can be fucking single for the next two years if you want to, but 10 years from now, you can go back and be like, oh yeah, Denmo solved this problem for me. Denmo explained everything that I need to know. Now I know. Thanks, Denmo. Okay. And by the way, I know a couple of you guys have gotten wiped up because of my videos and you're actually popping out babies. Name your kid Denmo. Why the fuck not? All right. Anyways, first, we're going to talk about the actual problem. Okay. Now, trigger warning. This is going to offend some people, but it's just the way it is. Okay. Let's go back in time a little bit. Women didn't used to have rights. Some people argue that that was a better time to be alive. I don't necessarily agree with that, but some people would argue that. Anyways, as the 80s rolled around and feminism became a big thing, women started to enter the workplace, okay? And I think it's a good thing. But at the same time, I think it's a bad thing. Here's what I mean. It's a good thing because if a woman wants to be in a workplace and she thrives at her job, that's great. Everybody's happy, okay? Here's the bad thing. The reason corporations do this is because they want to remove a woman from a household so that both working adults are now working full time for their bottom line. OK, at the end of the day, big corporations, they don't give a fuck about you or your family. They want profits. OK, and they can scale their business more, work more efficiency, efficiently and sell their product more if both men and women are working full time. All right. So that's what it's all about. It's not about women empowerment. It's about money at the end of the day, okay? And when a woman all of a sudden is making her own money, she has more control over what she spends money on. And because of that, she buys more shit. So that's why the GDP of every country has exploded since women have entered the workspace. And there's nothing wrong with that, okay? I'm totally pro-women entering the workspace. I just want to clear that up because, look guys, I know how easy it is to quote people out of context. My mom is a teacher. My aunts are both teachers. One of my aunts is a lawyer. My Nana was a nurse. All amazing women, all amazing jobs. My girlfriend's a doctor. How about that? Okay. I'm pro women in the workspace. I'm just saying this is part of the reason why a lot of men are single because women are out earning men. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen these statistics online about, you know, gender pay gap, like, oh, men are getting paid more. No, men do not get paid more purely because they are men. Otherwise, every company would hire women. Because if we could pay women less, that means more money for us, right? So I would 
hire all w women editors if it saved me money, okay? Here's the truth. Women are out earning men because one, education. So, I mean, we'll put that on the side here. Men are just fucking stupid, okay? We have a hard time sitting still in class. We're way more likely to be diagnosed with, you know, autism, ADHD, all that shit. School is not meant for us, okay? We need to run around in circles. We need to be physical with our bodies, not sit in a chair, medicated, and stare at the board, okay? We're not as good working with others. We are just slow, late bloomers compared to women. So they thrive in school, okay? And since they thrive in high school, they also thrive in college and university. Something like 60 to 65% of college and university is women. Graduates, even higher than that. A lot of men drop out. We go into like the trades, we go into physical labor, minimum wage stuff. Women essentially, yeah, they, they have a higher likelihood of graduating college and university. And because of that, they get paid more, okay? So right now, I just wanna like freeze here for a second. I always see comments and articles online about how modern women are the worst, okay? We've all agreed, we've seen those, right? Oh, modern women, they're the worst, okay? But here's the problem. You're fucking broke. You don't make money. You don't make more money than modern women, okay? So because of that, you have nothing to be talking about. You shouldn't be online talking about modern women unless you're making more money than modern women, all right? Now, the average modern woman is not making $100,000 a year. She's making actually around forty dollars to $60,000 a year. It's not that crazy, okay? But you guys online, all you pay attention to is the extreme examples that go viral on YouTube. So please, bro, I hope you're catching yourself right now because I know you're going to be like, well, well, Denmo, I saw this one video. This girl said she wants to make 400 k a year. Bro, that's like 0.5% of women are making that, okay? To be in the top 1% of my country, Canada, you need to make more than $200,000 a year. That's crazy, okay? The median income is not as high as you think. But at the same time, if you're going to criticize anybody, criticize yourself. Stop being fucking broke, okay? Because if you had more money, you'd have more time, more energy, more options. And most importantly, people that have money don't go on YouTube comment section. They don't have time to watch these fucking rants you see. Oh, modern women, you won't have time. When you have money, you don't have time to watch that shit, bro. Okay? God, I'm getting emotional here because you guys fucking annoy me. Fuck! Society is made up of us. And instead of being out there doing your job as a man, making money, living a fulfilling life, getting in good physical shape, providing value to society, fucking these bitches, making friends with people, making YouTube videos. I don't give a fuck whatever your thing is. Instead of doing all that, oh, modern women are the worst. Oh, it's so hard. Ugh. Fuck. Anyways. Uh, man, I'd get fired as a teacher in like five minutes, bro. I'd cuss everybody out and I'd get fucking fired permanently, okay? That's probably why it's better that I do what I do. Anyways, women are out earning men for the most part because one of the main things that a man has to have going for him in order for a woman to date him long term is he has to be making money. A lot of guys aren't making money. So that's a separate problem. Has nothing necessarily to do with women out earning men, but it's just most men aren't making money because most men aren't learning skills that are highly paid, okay? So that's another issue. Most men are broke, okay? Now, you can blame the government all you want, but there's nothing stopping you from becoming a fucking driller or a construction worker, an electrician, an offshore fisherman. There's a million different jobs you can work with minimum skills that are hard labor jobs. But guess what, bro? That's what your grandpa did. That's probably what your dad did, okay? If they could do it, you can do it too. You don't have to do it forever. Just two to five years, all right? Two to five years of, let's say, 70 to 120K a year. After that, you'll have a nice nest egg, bro. You'll have at least... 100 to 200k in the bank. You could spend that on education. You could spend that on starting a business. You could buy your own house in most parts of the United States, rent it out. Again, most guys don't want to do two to five years of hard labor. I've done my two to five years of hard labor. I worked construction, drilling. I was a forest firefighter for the Canadian government. I worked in a chicken factory. I did landscaping. 
And then I started a property management business with my buddy where we rented out student houses to international students, okay? That was all before the age of like 22. And then I started a YouTube channel, right? So my point is, most guys don't want to do the fucking hard work, all right? But the money's there. Anyways, back to the women are out earning men. Women are hypergamous when it comes to status. So that means they would rather date a guy that earns more money than them, has more friends than them, has more experience, AKA is a couple years older than them, is taller than them, a little bit better looking than them. If they can, people say, oh, it's only looks, Denmo. It's not only looks, okay? Look at every comedian, actor, YouTuber, musician, CEO ever. Most of them look like slugs. They're average height, below average height, but they still pull. Why? Because it's not just looks, you dumb motherfuckers, okay? Otherwise, I would not have pulled as much as I have pulled with just looks, okay? I am a handsome man, but come on, guys. Anyways, so because women are her pergamous for this, they care about a man's value outside of just looks. So, yes, bro, you do need to make more money than her, all right? And that's all it really comes to. You don't have to be rich. You just have to make more money than she does. And the average woman is earning about sixty dollars to $80,000 a year. However, here's where the real delusion is coming in. And this is something nobody fucking talks about. I don't know why, because it's so obvious to me, okay? You're too picky. And here's where that's a problem, okay? First of all, it's not your fault, bro, all right? Because your dad was happy with your mom. Your grandpa was happy with your grandma. Were they these amazing, divine, feminine baddies? Maybe. Probably not, though, bro. They're probably pretty damn average. But here's the thing. Back in the day, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have social media. We didn't have dating apps. So we weren't even aware of what else was out there. And because of that, our sex drive was preserved. You walk down the street, you see a girl, oh my God, she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. Marry me. Boom. That's it. Bob's your uncle, right? But now, ever since we're young, we see constant images of the most God-tier, attractive, fucking thick booties, beautiful women, perfect Instagram models. You go on IG, there's a million baddies. And you know what? The first man had a great quote the other day. He's like, plenty of beautiful women, not many successful men. He has a great point. There are literally endless gorgeous women that won the physical jackpot, okay? They just look amazing. And as men, we are hypergamous in attraction, which means we want to date women that are more attractive than us. That's all we fucking care about, okay? Every single guy doesn't care about how much money a woman makes, doesn't care about personality to an extent. It all starts with looks, okay? It all starts with being attracted to the woman. And because of that, we prioritize it over everything else. It's the most important thing, right? Now, the reason it's not our fault is because one, it's genetic, but two, we see these girls everywhere because it's a multi-trillion dollar industry. Porn. Porn is literally the number one traffic source on the internet. Instagram, baddies everywhere. YouTube. Can you believe this, guys? Here's another side tangent. There are literally guys on YouTube that make a full-time living bashing women, and every single video is a thumbnail with attractive women in it. Can you believe that shit? Think about it. Have you ever seen those videos? Oh, modern women exposed. Oh, to the delusional 29-year-old woman. All these fucking videos. Gorgeous woman. Okay, maybe she is being delusional. Maybe she is toxic. But you stupid, numbskull, knuckle-dragger fuck are watching these videos because, oh, attractive girl, I'm gonna click on it. That's my point, bro. Dudes will literally watch a video bashing women and like, hating on women, and even if they are right, what's, why are you watching that, bro? Like, do we really need to watch that content? Yeah, modern women, a lot of them have higher dating standards. On TikTok, there's a lot of narcissistic women. Okay, do you really need to watch that? Stupid, stupid monkey brain, okay? Fucking idiots. Anyways, you're too picky. You expect the girl that you date to be fucking beautiful, gorgeous, but somehow, somehow want to date your broke ass that doesn't work out, doesn't have any fucking friends, no hobbies, no skills, no talents, nothing interesting about you, but you fucking go online all the time, okay? You're on the internet, you're on social media, you work out once a week, you make fucking 20 bucks an hour, which isn't bad, but it's like, bro, 
Come on. Why the fuck do you think you deserve a high quality woman? You don't, all right? But those are the only girls you'll date. You're not dating Becky the three or fucking Marissa the five or Johnette the six. I'm just running out of girl names now. I don't know why, but you only want these hyper attractive, perfect girls, right? So that's all you pay attention to. Why? Because now that you know they exist, that's what you have your focus on. And as a man, again, this isn't your fault. It's not my fault either. We want the best. I want the best. That's just how it is. Once we know the best is there, I don't want anything else, okay? Why do so many men not want to work their current job so that they can start a business, travel the world, do what they want? Because they know it's possible. Previous generations didn't know it was possible. You could start a business and work for yourself. They didn't know it was possible that you could travel around the world working remote. They didn't know it was possible. You didn't have to go to the factory. You didn't have to be a construction worker. You could actually have a choice in what you do. That's why we do all this, okay? And it's the exact same thing with women. So that's why I don't blame guys and women, to be honest, for being delusional in their dating standards. But simply put, you're too damn picky. Standards, too high, okay? Now, here's where things get problematic, okay? Standards are too high, right? Now, I need to clear some space here. Let me just erase this. But guys, because our standards are so high, we prioritize paying attention to the most attractive women, okay? Now, this happens everywhere in life, all right? If you've ever worked in an office, everybody stops and listens when the hot girl talks. It just happens. When you're in school, everybody wants to work in the same group as the hot girl. Everybody wants to hang out with the hot girl. It's just how it is, okay? By the way, girls fucking hate this, okay? Girls hate hot girls because they take all the attention from all the guys, all right? In a classroom, there's plenty of girls that would probably be interested in you, but you don't give a fuck about them. You don't even realize they exist because you're focusing on the hot girl the entire time, all right? It's just how it goes. Anyways, here's the problem. Like I said before, we are obsessed with the most hottest, most attractive girls, but it just so happens that the most attractive girls are fucking narcissists. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I mean, it's the same thing with dudes. The most attractive dudes, pretty narcissistic as well. But yeah, most attractive girls are narcissists, okay? And they're not just narcissists. They're a couple of different things. But I want you to imagine this. Imagine you're born an eight or nine or 10 out of 10. Everybody's giving you attention your entire life. Guys are doing things for you. Teachers are nice to you. They treat you good and your parents tell you, oh, you can do anything you want. And here's the other thing too. We forgot about this. Most attractive girls come from wealthy families. Totally forgot about that. Sorry about that, guys. Most attractive girls are rich. So as men, we are biologically wired to spread our seed as much as possible. But in particular, we want the highest quality girl to date because then our kids look good. And if our kids look good, that means they're healthier because looks at the end of the day comes a lot down to health, like clear skin, nice wide shoulders, low body fats, you know, symmetrical face, hair, etc. These are all qualities of somebody that is fertile. This means they're healthy, which means they're more likely to survive childbirth, etc. I mean, a lot of bro science there. Okay. But Certain qualities are deemed uh, survivor, like good survivor qualities, okay? That's why when you see a woman that has a certain figure, you know, like the hourglass, like she's got big boobs and a fucking wide ass, you're just like, oh man, why does that look so right? Why does it look so good? Think about the most gorgeous girl you know. Just imagine like the most beautiful ass you've ever seen. Those ones where you just turn and you almost crash your car like, whoa, shit, God, that's a nice ass, you know? That happens sometimes. Um, those kind of asses, you just throw a coin at it and it bounces and it could land on the moon. It's just boom, those beautiful booties, right? Why are we so obsessed with them? Like, think about it with your fucking monkey caveman brain. At the end of the day, like it's an ass, it shits, poo comes out of it, but we're still obsessed with it. Isn't that ironic? It's because we're baboons. Okay. We literally look at them. We're like, Oh, that means fertile. All right. So because of that, men, especially men that work harder than you, are more talented than you. They have more skills than you because again, they're actually worried about making money, building status, social skills, etc. 
they're out competing you. They're making money. And because of all these things put together, they are attracting women and having sex with them and having kids, okay? Which is what we all want to do. We all want to reproduce with the highest quality woman possible, okay? That's normal. And because of that, our kids are better looking, you know? I'm taller than my dad. My dad's taller than his dad. Like each, each generation of men in my family gets a little bit taller and a little bit better looking, okay? And that's because we keep attracting better women and reproducing with them so the kids, the offspring is better, all right? This makes total sense. Here's the problem though. It's going to be biased towards guys that earn a lot of money because the guys that are successfully setting up their life, learning social skills, like again, for example, I have several courses, all right? We've got a bunch of products here at Denmo. I got my Denmo social course. I got Socializer School. And in these courses, I teach men how to approach and attract women and get a girlfriend in 60 to 90 days. And there's a lot of course material there, you know, mindset, confidence, lifestyle setup, but also like, you know, engineering, like generating more leads, how to like maximize the amount of women you meet. A lot of stuff's going on there, okay? But the men that watch my channel that have money, they can buy this, invest in this, and now they learn all of this and they're able to implement it and get dating results, okay? That's just one example of how you can use your money to get way better women in your life. But another example would be, you don't have to work full time anymore. You can actually work a couple days a week. So instead of five days a week, three days a week. Now you have two more days to go and meet women. If you don't have any women in your city or town, when you have money, you can move somewhere else. You move to a new city. You go to fucking Thailand or Bali where there's just a bunch of yoga bitches everywhere and they're broke and they're surfing. And you can just literally have a rotation of six girls in like a couple months because there's just hot hippie girls everywhere, right? The women are there, but you're not seeing them because again, you have these limiting beliefs about, oh, there's no girls in my hometown. Leave your hometown, dog. But that's my point. When you make money, this opens up all this, all right? Now, money isn't everything, but it's pretty damn useful when it comes to dating just because of the secondary benefits. It's not about, hey, look, I have this fancy car or Lambo. When most guys think, oh, girls only want your money, they think of guys that lead with their money. Look, bro, I make a fuck ton of money, but I live a very minimalistic life. I used to drive an absolute beater car. And if I wanted to, I could still successfully meet women while spending like $2,000 a month on my entire life, okay? Go to some other country, talk to some hot tourist girls that are going through there, hang out, relate, oh, it travel's the best, yeah, my old country sucks too, and then bang. Or just move to a big city in my country and get a condo or apartment right downtown and just cold approach all day. Easily get a girlfriend. The point I'm getting to is that most attractive girls are rich because their mom was attractive and her dad had to win over her mom, win over. I know that's like a lot of red pill guys, you'd be like, oh, you shouldn't win her over, she should win you over. Yeah, okay, you guys know what I mean, all right? High value man with money attracts attractive woman, has attractive son and daughter. But guess what? That daughter now, her dad made a fuck ton of money and was a pretty solid guy, all right? Most of the attractive girls I've dated, their dad is a stud because he was able to get the job done and pass on those genetics into the next generation via her hot mom. So because of that, these girls, they got a lot of money. They get sent to the best schools or universities because their tuition is paid for. They obviously have had people treating them well their whole life. So of course their expectations are going to be high because they are high. They are the top 10% of women. Top 10% of women, which is like at least an eight, okay? At least an eight, like a solid across the board eight and up. They're the most attractive girls. Everybody treats them like God. So they think they're God, okay? And they're narcissistic. And men, despite the, here, here's the funniest part. This is how hilarious we are as men. This girl could be the most evil, wicked, narcissistic, racist, misandrist, evil person in the world, but we'd still fuck her if she was hot, okay? That's just how it is. All these videos online of like, again, this used to be me. I do street interviews. I go to nightclubs. I'd interview guys and girls. The girls would always get the most views because they would say the dumbest shit, but like they're hot. So people watch, okay? Even if girls are awful, dudes will still pay attention and still have sex with them. That's the difference between men and women. You could be like the best looking guy in the world, but if a woman like sees one tweet you said three years ago, or like you're socially awkward or like your body language is a little off, she's like, ah, oh, yeah, right? Dudes are different. We'll fuck anything as long as she's attractive. Maybe not. All. Oh, sorry. 
Forgot about the guys in the YouTube comment section. Oh, not me, Denmo. Oh, no, modern women? Oh, it's not even worth it. Fucking loser. Shut your mouth. Anyways, now you have this hyper-rich generation of attractive women. They're on social media. They're posting about themselves. And yes, they're giving hot takes, the same ones that make you cringe. But guess what? For every attractive girl that's saying something along the lines of like, uh, men should make $300,000 a year. That actually makes sense to her. Why? Because she's hot and because her dad probably made that much money. Most families, the dad earns sixty dollars to $100,000 a year. So if you grew up in that family, as long as you hit around that ballpark, you're like, oh yeah, I'm doing as good as my dad did. That's fine, okay? But imagine women. They're not the ones that have to make the money in the relationship anyways. So instead of thinking about, oh, well, how much money did my mom make? Again, remember what I told you guys before? The workplace in the 80s and et cetera? They're probably comparing to their dad or their stepdad. And the stepdad, what does a dad do to get love? He, he provides, okay? So a lot of these girls, either their real dad or their stepdad, is buying them shit all the time. This is actually kind of comical. At least 70% of the relationships with girls I've been in, the car they drove, their dad bought for them. Okay, and I'm not talking about a fucking Nissan. I'm not talking about like some bullshit Honda, okay? I'm talking about a Mercedes, BMW, an Audi. Like, I don't know what it is about guys and buying their daughters like a very nice luxury car, okay? Maybe it's just the attractive girls, but a lot of these girls, their dad buys their car. So this might be an Ontario thing, but a lot of the girls I've dated, they're like, oh, well, my parents paid for my university. Oh, well, well, my dad bought it for himself, but then he didn't want it anymore, so uh, now I drive it. He didn't buy it for me. It was actually for him, but now I drive it. You know how many times I've heard that? Nothing wrong with that, okay? I'm probably going to spoil my kids too. I'm going to buy them shit as well. But again, guys, your logic goes out the window because you get emotional. You're like, oh, how come the, the hottest girls, the ones I like, the ones I deserve, they're also narcissistic and they're rich. That's not fair. Who's paying them, bro? Who's paying them? You. You're paying attention to them, okay? You're following them on Instagram, follow them on OnlyFans. Like, we as a society have created these monsters, all right? I'm not saying they're like worse than other people in the world. But again, like when you make a kid a social media influencer or a famous celebrity at a young age, you've created a monster, okay? Because there's all these essential things we have to go through in life in order to like develop as a normal adult. But like, imagine being famous when you're 15, okay? You're going to be fucked by the time you're 30 years old, I'm telling you. And it's the same thing with these people, unfortunately, right? So, God, let me see. Oh, we're already at 34 minutes. Holy fuck. This is supposed to be a 20-minute video, guys. God damn it. Why do I always do this? Okay. So anyways, you guys have seen the numbers. All right? Now, there's a certain bias where we only pay attention to what we see. Okay? So... If you are like most young men and you're a little bit retarded and you spend three hours a day on your phone, two hours on your computer, and your algorithm is basically geared so that all you see are attractive women and polarizing hot takes, you are going to see this the same way. Instead of, you know, 10% of women are bad, you fucking delusional knuckleheads are like, oh, all modern women are bad. So 100%. That's a pretty big jump because you only see the 10%. You don't care about all the girls that don't have social media or like the semi-attractive girls or, you know, like, again, guys, leave your house. I've lived with groups of girls multiple times, okay? And they are usually very chill. A lot of them don't even have Instagram, okay? They're attractive, they're normal, they're feminine. Like, you only know this when you live with them, okay? So, again, I'm not like... I'm not a fucking like, oh, super feminist. You're, oh, no, stop blaming the women. I'm just saying like, when you have real life experience, they're actually cool, all right? And you could say the same thing about chads. Like a lot of guys are like, oh, look, I hate these, these men over six feet tall that are, you know, they think they're better than me. And like, bro, you know, again, you, you have no experience, all right? So here's the second half of the video. And here's the problem, okay? I know we spent a lot of time talking about women, so I might have to retitle this video and redo the second concept later. But now let's talk about you, okay? Because we've talked about the women. We've talked about how and why they are the way they are and how in demand they are, okay? So again, let me draw a quick diagram, all right? If they're in the top 10%, for every one woman, okay? So let's just draw a little baddie here, okay? 
Got some bobs. Nice thick booty. Uh, she looks like a fucking ant. God damn. Okay, for every one of her, there's like 10 dudes that are poor, no social skills, out of shape. By the way, these are all things you can control, okay? You can definitely go to the gym. You can definitely lose weight. You can definitely stop using your phone five hours a day. You can definitely learn social skills. You can definitely become good at something. You can definitely earn money, okay? So like a lot of guys online are like, oh, girls should like me for the way I am. No, they fucking shouldn't because otherwise society wouldn't exist. The only reason shit gets done in this world is so that men can get pussy, okay? There, I said the small thing loud, all right? Why do you think potholes get fixed? Oh, because, no, it's because of pussy, all right? It's a whole other video, but everything is about women. Women and family, key thing, women and family, all right? All you guys that are like, whoa, modern women are the worst. Sick, bro, you're gonna have no family and your bloodline's not gonna continue. Is that really what you want? No, it's not, okay? So here's the problem. Now, does that mean there's only one woman, woman for every 10 guys? No, it does not mean this. Okay, but guess what? The other nine women, you guys don't give a fuck about them. All right? They're over here. They're waiting for you. But you don't give a fuck about them. Why? Oh, man. I'm, these women are not looking the best, okay? They're good looking women, too, but, you know, my drawing's not so good. They're all over here. You're not paying attention to them. How come? I'll tell you right now why it is. Because you'd rather watch her on Instagram or fucking Tinder then cold approach these girls in real life. That's really all it fucking is, man. I am so sick and tired of hearing excuses of guys saying, oh, like, well, there's no girls. Or... Talk to them. God damn it, man. Fuck. Fuck, you guys drive me crazy. Talk to them, guys. Oh, look. There's a couple things that you need to do before, all right? You should be working out regularly. No time for video games. You're not consuming shit like this. Again, you can go and talk to these girls. Now you're going to be all mentally fucked up because all you've done is paid attention to this girl. Imagine this. Imagine if each girl thought that you were, I don't know, a fucking barbarian serial killer, okay? If they thought every guy was a serial killer barbarian, they would never leave their house, all right? You guys think every woman is like negative, toxic, earns a bunch of money, and that hurts your status, bro, okay? When you see women say, oh, I want to make $300,000 a year, I want my partner to make 300K, and you don't, that triggers the fuck out of you, okay? This used to trigger me too, until I started making $300,000 a year. Now that I make it, I'm like, fuck yeah! Look at this! Perfect! Right? And I'm not saying I date girls that expect that, but what I'm saying is like, I see that, I'm like, oh, that doesn't even bother me, okay? Let's say you have a lot of pizza, okay? You have a lot of fucking pizza, and girls are like, I only like guys that have pizza. And you're like, okay, cool. I mean, I have pizza, so it's all good. But you guys don't have that. You don't have any fucking money. And you expect girls, especially this top percent girl, to come to you, all right? It's a fantasy that they all sell. You know, OnlyFans, Instagram, reply to your comments, they heart it. Like, it's, it's a honeypot. There's so many guys that get scammed every year by these, like, mail order brides and shit, too. It's sad, okay? But that's, like, the main problem why guys are single. You're all focused on these girls, not these girls. Most of these girls are as attractive as these girls. But guess what? You don't notice that because you don't leave your house, man. You don't go and talk to these girls, all right? The next reason, let's see this. We got another group of bitches, all right? Okay, here's this other group. They're over here. You know, not as big of a group, but guess what? You're going to meet these girls through warm approach okay warm and warm is through social circles and social settings such as groups classes having friends okay most of you knuckleheads here's the other problem you think okay i'm gonna go oh, this is great i'm gonna i'm gonna draw out a big fucking diagram here take a look at that though that's the main thing but let me draw out a diagram for you too okay oh you guys are getting a treat today I'm going fucking off on this, this video, all right? I'm the best teacher ever, okay? Leave me a comment down below, best professor ever. Definitely gotten getting canceled and fired, but he's the best, all right? So here's the problem. Most guys 
they want to go directly to the girl. Okay? So here's the girl. Let's draw her looking nice. Mmm. Yeah, look at that. Look at that body. Mm-hmm. She's got a nice booty. She tick. She a tick fucking... Yeah. Uh, you know what? A lot of girls at the gym are built like that. <laughs> so they got the crop top and they got the pink or blue bottom. Yeah, she looking good, right? Yeah, damn. Damn, a couple of you guys are going to get fucking hard on this, all right? So this is the baddie. That's what you guys want, right? Here's you. That's you. That's her. You want her, right? You stupid fucks think that you can just go like this. Okay, and here's the thing. You don't have the balls to go and cold approach her in real life. All right. Some of you do. Big shout out to you guys. I know a lot of guys, I actually did a video on this recently, that they don't understand, like they lack self-awareness and they watch a Disney movie and they just think, oh, like girls like me for how I am. I'm just going to go and talk to the hottest girl possible because I saw Jack Denmo do it in a video. All right. Guys, all of the approaches I've done on these baddies, what you don't see is all the work I've done on myself first. Okay. It's not as easy as just use this one magic line. Okay. There's more to it than that. However, I'd say less than 5% of men actually cold approach girls. Be honest, bro. Talk in the, in the comment section below. Tell me how many cold approaches you've done in your entire life, okay? I've done about 2,000. And that's not even that much, to be honest, okay? But it just so happened I filmed most of my cold approaches. And I put them on YouTube. And you can get access to those in my socializer school. Link in the description. Paid community. But this is stupid, okay? Because first of all, it's these Instagram and dating app girls you're trying to go direct to. Why? Because on a dating app, if you can just instantly get access to like the hottest girls, that means you don't have to do anything. And the apps tell you like, oh, you could literally, these are all the girls that are available. So your fucking caveman brain is like, oh, I have a chance. Oh, I have a chance. Oh, I have a chance. And then you don't get any results or you swipe on a couple girls because the algorithm boosts your profile because you just joined and they want you to stay on there. And then what happens is they're like, oh, sorry, bro. You've run out of likes. But if you pay for Tinder premium, Oh yeah, now now we'll show you more of these. And you're like, oh, okay. Again, this instant access that you guys are used to. And we see this everywhere in life, you know? You can order fucking Uber Eats now. You can get shit delivered to your doorstep from Amazon that you used to actually have to go and like look for. Life is set up to be convenient. Here's the problem though. This isn't about money, okay? You can't just pay these girls for sex. I mean, in some countries you can. But for the most part, you can't, okay? Anyways, this is how it actually works, guys. So let me draw another baddie down below and uh, this time I'm gonna I'm gonna not put as much detail into uh, her body all right she's gonna look pretty normal okay but this is you right red man and then this is her a baddie just like a uh, okay let's give her let's give her a nice pooper still yeah okay not bad look most of you guys would fucking still tap that all right now here's the problem most of you guys think, oh, it's direct. It's actually not. There's a couple things in between. Okay. So let me give you an example. First thing you need to do is go to the gym. Right? That's a bicep. Okay. And by the way, guys, I've been pretty skinny my entire life and I've still been successful. So when I say go to the gym, I don't mean you have to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. All right. You can lose body fat, put on some muscle mass, get ripped. You don't have to be the most deezed guy in the world. Okay, just look fit, okay? So the first thing, okay, gym. Why? Because now she sees that you're physically fit, which means you're healthy, which is very important. But two, <coughs> other people respect you because they know exercise takes hard work. People don't want to wake up. They don't want to lift weights, all right? That's why most people don't go to the gym. Like 65% of men, or actually Americans in general, men and women, they don't exercise. Shocker, right? Now what else is there? Okay, we also need to make social skills, right? So, I mean, how do I draw that? You talking to others. So you have to be able to talk to other people, especially people you don't know. This is one of the biggest problems men have is they can't go and talk to girls in real life. They think girls are like these, like they put them on such a pedestal that they're terrified of rejection, so they don't go and talk to girls, okay? But at the same time, most guys, they aren't approaching dudes to become friends with them either. Most of you guys only hang out with your high school buddies, okay? Or if you have a job, your coworkers, the three or four people you hang out with work, that's your entire social circle. So, you know, this is just a rusty skill. Most people, 
aren't charismatic. They're not good at talking to others, right? I've been able to hold your attention for 47 minutes. How long could you hold the average person's attention? Probably not even fucking five minutes, bro. You're boring. You don't know how to talk to people. Nobody's interested in hearing what you have to say. I'm sorry. I know that sounds rough, but again, I used to be like this too, but then I worked on it as a skill. Okay. So again, socialize. You need to be able to socialize. Okay. So those are the two basic ones. Fit, healthy, confident, and the ability to talk to others. Socialize. Because men fall in love with what we see. Women fall in love with what they hear. Remember that. Okay. That's why it's great to be a man. I know it's harder to be a man, but we can go zero to a hundred. All right. We can start with absolutely fucking nothing and get to the top of the food chain. Women, they're born with what they got. It is what it is, bro. Okay. Doesn't matter how much money she has. If she's not attractive, a lot of people are not going to be interested in dating her. And that's one of the downsides of uh, being a woman. You're not necessarily valued by other things besides how you look, which sucks, but it's just the way it is, bro. Okay. And I'm just talking about dating. All right. You can obviously val like I value women on more than just what they're physically looking like to me, but I'm talking about society in general. All right. And you guys, to be honest, most of you guys, you don't care about what average girls have to say. You only care about those top 1% ones. We talked about this now. Okay. You need to exercise. You need to socialize regularly. All right. Now you need to make money. Okay. And I know what you guys are thinking, Oh, all girls only care about money. Well, think about it this way. What is money? Money is leverage. Money is time. Money is value. When you are able to solve problems for people or for society, you get paid. And the more important the problem you solve is, the more urgent slash expensive it is, the more money you get paid. You get paid in accordance to the value you provide. That is why doctors and lawyers make so much money because helping people with medical issues is a big fucking deal. All right. So you get paid a lot of money helping people with legal issues. It's a big fucking deal. So you get a lot of money. It requires a lot of knowledge, a lot of intelligence, a lot of resources. The stakes are very high, bro. Heart surgery, fucking trial stakes are high. Okay. And because of that, they get paid in accordance, but guess what? They're stressful jobs. They take a lot of work and energy. Most people aren't willing to dedicate that amount of time and effort towards something because you guys have pea brains and you're scrolling on TikTok. How the fuck do you think you could go through six years of school if you can barely make it five minutes without scratching your nuts and going on TikTok? That's my point. Okay. You're a numbskull pea brain, right? But in addition to this, the example I gave before working in the construction industry for a couple of years, saving up money, getting a down payment for a house or investing in a business. Okay. I took my money and I invested it into starting a couple of businesses and they paid off. I didn't want to have to work as a forest firefighter for the rest of my life. I didn't want to have to work as a driller on a construction site. So I saved up my money and I invested it guys. Okay. You can do the exact same thing. All right. Again, I used to be a total fucking scrub. I still am, but I'm less of a scrub than I used to be because of money. All right. Because now when you have money, you have more time instead of working five days a week, being tired after work every day, and then like barely covering all your shit, like errands and stuff, Saturday, Sunday, you can only work three days a week. Okay. So the money actually leads to time. Okay. I'm going to draw a little clock here. You know, it's funny guys. When I was a kid, I was actually really good at drawing. Now you have money and time. So let's go over it. Okay. Remember knucklehead before? Oh, I'll just go and talk to Becky right away. No, stupid. Going to the gym regularly, not just once regularly. Okay. Going to the gym regularly, healthy, fit, strong, confident, socializing with guys and girls, friend groups, talking to strangers every single day, leaving your house, talking to five to 10 people. If you have a hard time with this, by the way, I created a free course. It's called the socializer protocol. And I have all these worksheets that you could fill out and actually print out, put on your wall. I have one. It's like a daily habit tracker. It has all of this on it and you can literally tick for every day of the month. Okay. It's totally free. Uh, in the description, just go to my free group. The paid group is Socializer School. The free group is Socializer Protocol. So that's the free one. Totally free. You can manage all this daily. Okay. 10,000 others in there, by the way, we're getting big. So you have time and money in addition to this. So you can relocate to a different city. One of the biggest problems guys have is they don't have any options because, well, there's no girls where I live and I work. Those are your two problems, bro. Move somewhere else and stop working so much. Well, how do I do that then, Mo? Making money, you dumb fuck. 
God. Okay, so now we have all these, okay? And the last thing is essentially just time, okay? And it's not just time. Uh, this is an hourglass. Wow, it looks like shit. We'll go experience too. You know EXP? I know a lot of you fucks play video games when you're younger. I didn't really play video games. My mom's a teacher and a lot of her students started getting like Xboxes and Playstations and shit and their marks just dropped off a cliff. Like these guys just destroyed their brains, okay? She saw this and she couldn't do anything about it because she's not going to tell your parent, tell the kid's parents, hey, take away all the Playstations and shit from the kids. They don't give a fuck, okay? So she took her wrath out on me. I didn't get shit, bro, okay? I didn't get to play video games until I was a fucking teenager, man. So the only thing I could do is go online and find free games to play, sometimes. And uh, anyways, one of those games was called Maple Story. And in Maple Story, you level up by gaining EXP, okay? These are real life experiences. But here's the thing. If you don't go to the gym regularly, you look like shit, you have no confidence. And the fact you can't even go to the gym three days a week, what makes you think you can go and talk to people three days a week? This is like less about physicality. It's more about, you know, mental health. Confidence and discipline. All right. One of those mind fucks. You think it's about muscles, it's actually not. Socializing, okay. Well, who are you hanging out with? Probably your same high school buddies. Based on what? The fact that you guys grew up on the same street? You have nothing in common, no interest. You're not going to like improv class, you're not going to dance class, you're not going to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You're just hanging out with the same people that you've known your whole life. Time and money. Well, you don't make much money and that's okay. Look, I didn't make much money till I was like 24. Okay. So on, in your early twenties, what you should be doing is learning. All right. You should be investing in mentors. If there's somebody that's wealthy in your city, work for them for free. Or if you're in the trades, you're going to have to put in a certain amount of hours. So you get your qualifications and pay wages. You know, most lawyers and doctors, they don't actually start practicing till like the age of 30 because they're in school for like seven or eight years, right? So my point is like, yes, if you're a young man, money is not the most important thing. You could actually get away without having money because young women's standards are lower. They don't care as much about money because until they get to their mid to late twenties, money doesn't matter to them because their parents are rich and they don't actually have to work a full-time job yet. Okay. 27 year old woman. Oh, buddy, you got to make a fuck ton of money. You got to have a condo. Your house has to be clean. You got to have like, you know, a nice dress shirt so you can wear, so you can bring you to weddings and shit. Like totally different story. Okay. But if you're a young guy, it's not as important. But again, you lack control of your time because you have a job that you don't care about and it takes up all your hours. All right. So yeah, dude, you're going to be working nine to five and after work every day, you're going to be tired. You got to, you know, you got to go to the gym. You got to go and buy groceries and shit. So what would be easy for you? Oh, I know what would be easy. Going and watching YouTube videos going on dating apps, going on Instagram and looking at fucking baddies, dude. Okay. That's why most guys are single. There's so many more options than there used to be. Your grandparents, they didn't have this. They knew they had to do all this, bro. Bro, your grandparents, they're like, oh yeah, this is fucking obvious, bro. Of course we had to do all this. You stupid fucks are like, oh, why can't I just get this girl instantly without doing any working out, any socializing? I'm broke and I have no time and I have no experience. Oh man, life's not fair. Modern women are the worst. This is the kicker with you guys, all right? Hopefully this video, like if you're, I wouldn't say an incel, but you, if you have negative thoughts over women, okay, and dating, please, man, leave me a comment saying, you know what, Denmo, you actually changed my mind on this, okay? Because even if this video doesn't get many views, as long as I can convert five or 10 of you into like seeing this and understanding it, that means there's less incels, there's less negativity online. Like again, one of the problems with this bullshit on the internet about like modern women and shit is like there's vulnerable young men, like 15 year olds, 18 year olds, even guys that are recently divorced, they go online and they're trying to learn. And of course, you know, because of their ADHD fucking monkey brain, they scroll to the comment section. Instead of listening to the video, they go to the comment section. And what do they see? Comments, oh, modern women are the worst. Oh, they need you to be this tall. Nothing matters but looks. Like you start to see all this and you go, oh, is that true? And then you get insecure. Next thing you know, you have all these guys that are hyper insecure in the comment section, not getting, so it's like a negative cycle you get stuck in. And what do they do? In order to get validation from others, they leave comments like this. So 
The only reason people leave comments in the comment section, unless you're talking directly to me, is to get attention from other people in the comment section. So that's why incels leave comments like, that's not true, only thing that matters is your height, right? Because deep down, they want other people to approve of them saying that. They want other people to see that comment and agree with them because that gives them status. Imagine your life is so fucked up that that's how you get status, bashing others. That's my point, bro. But let's avoid all that and just be better men and better women too. Because here's the thing. If you do all this, women respect you, people respect you, your friends respect you, society respects you, and yes, you could have a family and a successful partnership, okay? So as much as it seems like, oh, what, why do we have to do all that and they don't have to do anything? Because that's how life is. We could do a whole other video on all the advantages you have as a man that women do not have. But most guys aren't ready for that conversation because first you need to solve these problems, okay? Now, the experience. This is the most important part. I had a mentor tell me a while ago, the most important thing that he has is experience. It's not skill, it's not hard work, it's not toughness, it's experience. Because experience essentially is like reference points, right? First time you go on a date with a girl and you know, she shows up late and you don't call her out on it. Or you show up and you know, something awkward happens, uh, she tests you, she goes on her phone. You make all these mistakes and she doesn't sleep with you, okay? Or you're a little bit too thirsty, you're like simping for her, texting her too fast, texting her twice. You know, guys, we do this all the time. You have a girl, you think she's into you, so you start making stupid mistakes because you're thinking with your pee pee, not your brain, you pee brain. See, so your brain's so fucking small, you have to think with your dick, okay? That's recipe for disaster. You find yourself in this situation, you start texting a girl like paragraphs, two texts in a row, you start like being available all the time. You make all these mistakes and they get turned off and they don't want to date you. And either one of two things happen. One, you become a fucking incel, okay? Oh, I guess it doesn't work for me. Or two, you learn, you gain experience. You go, ah, oh, I'm not gonna text her back right away. Oh, I'm never gonna send her two text messages in a row. Oh, instead of getting her phone number and then setting up the date, I'm gonna cold approach her and then bring up the idea of what date we would go on. And then if she's interested, ask for her phone number or better yet, I'll give her my number and then she'll text me, which means I have a text message to reply to. That way I don't have to double text her. You guys learn all these things through experience, okay? Most of you dumb fucks, you still are believing the fantasy of Instagram and dating app girls, right? Most of you dumb fucks are still in the YouTube comment section. You're not doing any of these. Because of that, you don't know that this works, all right? It works, but you don't know that. Or you're just lazy and you're coping, one or the other. But as you start to do this, you gain experience. This is what gets you good, solid, okay? So now you can see a girl, go and say hi to her. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what are you up to right now? Oh, I'm so-and-so. Nice to meet you. Yeah, and then blah, 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 blah. You have a conversation, right? There's other ways to start conversations. I have a lot of content on this in my paid socializer community. I have like 30 hours of fucking pickup line videos. Guys, I used to literally spend hours a day going and talking to girls because I had a YouTube channel where I did pranks, interviews, stuff like that. And I did it just because it was funny and you know, it's comedy material, but like a lot of guys were like, holy shit, this is how you go talk to girls? So that's why I kind of pivoted to this, you know, temporarily. I'm going back to acting soon, but the point I'm making is like, people didn't know how to do this, all right? So I have hundreds of tutorials within my paid community where I break this down. If, if you're a visual learner, you wanna see me go and talk to girls so you understand that's there. But the point I'm making is like, as you do this more often, you become a socializer. You learn how to talk to them. You learn how to attract them. You understand the shit tests. You understand how to handle dates, how to handle texting. You also understand how to make friends. You're making more money so you can travel to a new city you can go to a new country, like all of this is doable, guys, all right? And in addition to this, there's also purpose, talent, things you're good at. For me, my whole life, I've been able to make girls laugh, okay? Well, not my whole life, but once I realized, oh, girls like funny guys, I became funny because guys like funny guys too. That's why I have a lot of followers because people think I'm funny. And you need to find your thing. I recommend being funny if you can be, but some guys, it's just being really athletic. You're really good at a certain sport or you're really smart. I know there's a lot of dudes that are really good musicians. They're really good at playing piano or they're really good at being an accountant or a lawyer or dude, some guys, they literally review movies for a living. Okay. Some guys just go on Twitter and review tech products. Like 
you need to find your thing because if you enjoy it and you're good at it and you're passionate about it, that's what's important to women and also other guys. Like most of your friends, they probably don't give a fuck about, you know, your art or whatever, but they care that you care about it. Girls love guys that are ambitious, they're passionate, and they've got their shit figured out. They're moving towards something. That's why all this is so important, okay? And here's the thing. At the end of the day, even if you do have a good dating app profile, she can't see any of that, okay? So, like, it doesn't go back this way. There, there is no arrow that way. It's not a thing. All she sees is a fucking picture of you and hopefully your rich buddies. And that's it, all right? Now, I know we're... Oh, fuck, another one-hour video. God damn it. We're going a little bit long in the tooth here, but because of this and guys not doing this, guys are expecting this, guys aren't doing this. That's why 65% of men are single. Now, we've already covered a couple other reasons. We only want the top 10% of women. However, the top 10% of women come from rich families with rich dads, so they have very high expectations. And because of the amount of attention they get online on social media, they have high expectations. So they've essentially made themselves very unreachable, okay? And the only way guys cope with this is they go, oh, well, once you're 30, you're going to go downhill. It's like, okay, but like even at 40, the average woman still has more options than you. And I don't mean that to make you mad. You know what? Fuck it. I do mean it to make it mad. How many times have you watched a video today? How many hours have you spent looking at YouTube videos? Oh, how do we get a girl? Oh, how do I become more attractive? Seriously, bro? Like, I solved this problem years ago. But before then, I was fucking so horny all the time that all I could do was think about women. And all I did was go on Google, how do I get girls to like me, etc. I wasted so many hours of my life. And if I just figured it out faster, then I would have solved it a lot earlier and I would have probably gotten further ahead in my other goals. Dude, for all you know, you have so much potential to be an actor, a musician, a business owner. You could start your own YouTube channel talking about whatever you want. You could literally volunteer at your local homeless shelter. You could donate blood. You could become a fucking gardener. You could join an MMA gym. Like there's so many things you could be doing, but instead you're horny and you want to figure out how to get girls. So instead of just watching videos over and over again, Fucking rewatch this a couple times. Join my paid community if you really need help and you want to solve this problem. Join my free community if you want to get access to the Socializer Protocol, which is a free guide. But most importantly, man, you don't have time to be leaving comments in the comment section that are negative. So only positive comments from now on. Only funny comments. I love funny comments. If you leave me a funny comment, I'll give you a heart and I'll read it in the next video or some shit. But, you know, this is the formula, okay? I've beat this to a fucking pulp and um, I'll do more videos specifically in the future. Other reasons why men are single, but this is like the most important one, okay? All right, boys, with that being said, the classroom. Oh, oh, do you guys hear that? Oh, it's a bell. The bell's ringing. Class is over, guys, okay? I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.